Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. December 16th, Oliver Cromwell. Cromwell was a politician and a Puritan. He believed men could go directly to God without a go-between, and he was willing to defend this belief with his life. In the 1600s, civil war broke out in England, with Parliament fighting against the king. Cromwell led the Parliament army. The king believed in his divine right for absolute authority, and he used his station to try and eliminate the Puritans from England. Both the king and Parliament wanted control of the army. Like any civil war, it was hideous, a country's people fighting their own. On this date, in 1653, Cromwell became the Lord Protector of England, the title one uses to say, I'm in charge, when the authority of the king has been denied. Cromwell's side won, and he lived to fight many more battles. His army loved him, Puritans like John Owen and John Milton supported him, and foreign rulers admired him. Still, many saw him as harsh, and of course the royalists still hated him. Eventually, he died of malaria. Two years after his death, the king's men dug up Cromwell's body, hanged it, cut off his head, and hoisted it on a pole at Westminster Hall. Today's story is about one of the battles of the Civil War. The duty to protect the marginalized and most vulnerable of society goes beyond all boundaries. In the Battle of Marston Moor, 4,000 fathers and uncles, sons and brothers died. When the battle finally ended, the bodies of the King's soldiers and Parliament's soldiers lay together on the bloody battlefield. Families picked their way among the dead. They searched for their loved ones. They wanted to bring them home after the hard-fought battle. With those families, Oliver Cromwell, a leader on the Parliament's side, walked that field. He thought of his nephew. During the battle, young Walton had been hit by cannon fire. Medical help had arrived, but failed to save the young man's life. Cromwell would have to write to his sister and brother-in-law. He would have to tell them their son Walton had died with dignity. As he walked between the bodies, Cromwell noticed a young woman ahead stepping carefully among the fallen. She searched each of the faces. Clearly, she was looking for someone. This was no place for a young woman. Didn't she know the battlefield was a dangerous and gruesome place to be even after the battle was over? Despite the military presence, looters still overran the fields. And if she were related to the king's men, the victorious Parliament soldiers might count her as an enemy. He hurried toward her. Whether friend or foe, for her own safety, she had to get off this battlefield. As he got near, she must have felt his presence. When she looked up and saw him, she became panic-stricken. When he raised his hand to her and showed what compassion he could in his face, he saw her panic dissolve into grief overwhelming loss. Poor child, he thought. Cromwell asked her name. She was called Mary, wife of Charles Townley of Lancashire, who was from a prominent Catholic family and a member of the King's army that Cromwell's side had defeated the previous day. Though he knew the awful answer, he asked her why she was there and frantically searching. She was looking for the body of her husband Cromwell listened to her intently, and he recognized the kind of sorrow she had. That was all he needed to know. The woman could not bring her husband, Charles, back. In fact, many of the dead had already been buried. She was risking her life just being there, especially with her connections to the king. Despite her bravery, he gently urged her to seek the safety of her home. Not only could she be traumatized by the horrors of war, but she could easily be attacked or killed. He implored her to think of her own safety, to return to the family who needed her, especially now. 
It did not take long to convince her to go home, and she turned back to find the road. But Cromwell would not let her go alone. Vagabonds and looters threatened even outside the battlefield. He called for one of his own troopers, one he trusted, to escort her back and make sure that no one would harm her. The trooper arrived and mounted her on his own horse to take her safely to her home. Cromwell didn't tell her his name. There was no need to frighten her. Would she have accepted his help if she knew he was one of the leaders of the army of the parliament? He did not know, nor did it matter to him. What did matter to him was that she got home safely. And when his trooper returned to confirm Mary's safe return, Cromwell was satisfied. Too many had been lost in the Battle of Marston Moor, but at least one life could be saved. Psalm 68, 5 tells us, A father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. Does your heart break for the marginalized and most vulnerable? Is God giving you his heart of compassion as a protector? Are you willing to ask God to give you his eyes to see his children who need protecting? What is your next step? Are you willing to choose compassion? The duty to protect the marginalized and the most vulnerable of society goes beyond all boundaries. Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.